Hi, I'm Mary Quick, and I really want so proud to introduce to you my mother, uh, Lady Prudence Quick, otherwise no, known as Prue. Yes, known as, known as Prue, not please. <laughs> so what I want to do, Mum, is to ask you what about the founding of the cheese dairy? Because, you know, it's a story that we just don't tell. And I know that when I do tell right, people yes. are, well, it blown away. Well, back a long way to about the 60s. Dad was moaning of the producing milk, you know, the primary production wasn't profitable enough. I've lost you, by the way. I can't see you anymore. That's fine. Just keep going. Okay. And uh, we were, of course, providing milk to some sometimes to Chikushi, the cheese makers down the road. Or the rest of the time, it went to the milk market board. But, um, uh, so Dad thought we ought to be making cheese ourselves. And uh, so we applied milk marketing board for a... You had to have a license in those days to make cheese at all. All left over, of course, from the war when everything was centralised. Anyway, we applied for a license and then... Nothing happened, and we completely forgot about it uh, till about four years later, which would have been about 1970, I suppose. We got this license to make um, X number of um, litres of milk into cheese. And by that time, Dad was caught kind of busy in London with all his different things he was doing. And um, so if we were going to do it, I, I was, I was going to have to take it on. Crikey, so mum, at that time you had six children and how, how young was um, Alice? Well, 1970, Dill was six. Goodness was, me. No, wait a minute, that's wrong. No, no, she wasn't. Um, she was born in, uh, gosh, 64. Yes, she was, she was six. Six? Yes, Amazing. So they are six children, <laughs> the youngest, six to 16. And you that's said, right, really? yeah. I, so how come, Mum, given, given that, that rearing six children and all the rest of it is quite hard work, what was it, how was it that you knew that you could do this? Oh, that was the story from the art school, of course. I'd had an art, a, a, a fairly long art training, about four years or so, at the Chelsea Polytechnic in London. And at a lecture, which I always remember, uh, we, was, we were told, well, an artist is a person who can do anything if an artist is asked to build a bridge they can build a bridge and so i remember thinking that's fairly extraordinary you know, is that really true <laughs> and i remembered it then so i thought well if i'm an artist i can set up a cheese dairy can't i <laughs> you can do anything uh, that's absolutely amazing and so, actually, so there you were and so how did you build the cheese dairy how did you well i think know the thing is we and... we yeah, we and neither neither of us knew the first thing about cheese making, so we just had to get hold of Katie Madover, who was the great great lady, who was the sort of queen of the dairy technology at Cannington, and she she used to come anyway help us with dairy issues now and again. So we simply said to her, "Help, you know, and um, we want to do this cheese making." She was thrilled a bit, so we wanted to do it. So she produced a sort of plan which wasn't very practical but it could be made to be and um then over the next couple of years the it was built and she and i had great fun actually going around because we were determined to set it up as cheaply as possible and we didn't have a lot of spare cash and um so we got all the all the equipment was second hand so we went around to all her cheese made chums in somerset buying second-hand uh, vats and pasteurizer and goodness knows what. And, so um, how much did you set it up for? Well, when it was finally, I think, all put together, it was 26,000, which was... <laughs> amazing. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> amazing. Sounds a bit extraordinary. Yes, absolutely. So, Mum, when, when, you, when you set it up, I mean, that must have been pretty confronting. So, you know, however many years later it was after you were applied for the license what what was the decision making process for you to set it up well we just knew we had to do it do you know i don't remember it being really much of a discussion i think it was just so obvious that that was the right thing to do well i and, uh, remember long discussions when i was a child so i must have been about 14 and you and dad talking long into the night about this 
and I seem to recall you through the different Chinese. Oh, well, I think we did in the right. end. Yes, I think I think we we wanted to make sure that we were in the right um, <laughs> on the side of destiny. So I think we did the did the change. And I recall yes. that it answered that it would be. Uh, you know, going over a river and it would be a hard, tr hard road, but it was would be the right thing to do. I well, I've forgotten that what the answer was, other than the fact that we got the go ahead, basically. Uh, well, you remember <laughs> more than I do about that. <laughs> and so, Mom, what was it like building the the cheese when? So when you you first opened the cheese dairy, how was? I mean, what was that like? The very first day when you? Oh my gosh! Well, there's a story because um, we had a. Uh, Katie Madiba knew this uh, dairy, um, what was he called? He was the man who specialised in pipe work, you know, the stainless steel pipe work for the dairy. And he was at work for months to set it all up and everything. And it was all ready to go. And we first day the milk was turned on and the milk started squirting out of all the joints. And so <laughs> <laughs> and did, we had to and stop. And he had to tighten everything up. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the milk squirting out of the joints now. <laughs> oh, funny. So um, how did you, because at that time, lots of people wanted to make, um, you know, the, the, the modern and fashionable cheese was block cheddar. How did yes. you know, why did, how did you decide to make traditional cheddar? That was just hunch, I think, which we, um, I, I mean, the... Um, I mean, we've been making traditional for quite quite a few months, I suppose, when everybody's talking about going to, into block making, but it um, just didn't feel right. We we decided, you know, it was traditional or not at all, basically. And, and why, um, what was the thinking there? I mean, were well, you... Were you I, can't, I can't really remember, other than the fact that it was a sort of intuitive thing that... Um, Partly aesthetic, I think. The the uh, block cheddar was so horribly unattractive compared to a uh, a traditional one, all wrapped up in cloth and stuff. And um, so it didn't have any appeal for us. I think that was it. And I think actually, I think Dad was probably quite right. He felt that there was, you know, a limit to the appeal of a block cheddar compared to a traditional. Because he was a great wine drinker, so I think he did. He compare it with the sort of wine that you could buy. Yes, I think he did. I think there was the idea, you know, that we wanted to be a kind of um, chateau bottled um, cheese rather than a um, <laughs> factory made one. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And then, yeah. and then, Mum, you, the you, um, we, we started selling the cheese, didn't we? I mean, we at that time we had to sell all the cheese via the milk marketing board. Yes, but no, the story about the, um, how we came to sell it ourselves is a different one in that um, after, at a certain point, we used to get a monthly check for the cheese they'd sold. And then one month, nothing came. And um, so I rang up Crumpway and said, you know, where's the check? And they said, well, very sorry, we haven't sold any cheese. You can you can get it. We can give you the cost of production if you like. And of course, that was an insult, really. So um, we thought about it and we said to them, well, "Well, thank you very much. We'll have all our cheese back on the farm and sell it ourselves." And, and of course, at that point, that broke the milk marketing board monopoly. Yes, I, I mean, I, I know you said that, and I hadn't really fully realised that as an implication. I mean, we. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it, it was extraordinary that we were actually allowed to do that, but nobody could stop us, apparently. And, um, Isn't that interesting? Yes. Anyway, we got all the cheese back, and we had to rattle around finding somewhere to store it, and then rattle around to try and sell it. And um, I remember going to Crediton with a few bits of cheese and going to Lee's stalls and <laughs> selling a few bits locally. But then John Riley popped up, do you remember? And yes. uh, he had sold farm machinery and things like that. He said, I'll sell your cheese for you. And he set about it and actually did quite well. But the best, best sort of starting point was that the first year we were selling our own cheese was we, got, we took a stand at the Devon County Show 
and um, <coughs> I painted a big backdrop with a cow on it and um, we sort of thought well we'll the three, he, he and his wife and me we'd have one day each at the show and um, so we started off on the first day but we were so busy that we had to all three of us go every each of the three days of the show uh -huh. I think that some of the trade customers we got then uh, carried on for quite a long time if not um, I don't know what we still have now, but certainly it went on for years and years. So that actually really got the sales off the ground, I think, was that Devon County show stand. Amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so <laughs> lovely to hear how it was all started. And, <laughs> Mum, I mean, although you built that cheese dairy in 1973 it's also true that cheese would have been made on the farm in all the little dairies in the farmhouses oh yes absolutely and in fact funny enough only recently i've heard a story about that one of the ladies who lived in live in a flat in this almost my next door neighbor in the, in the, in the house here <coughs> uh she was telling me the other day that someone had produced an invitation card from Captain and Mrs Quick for her mother to go and do a cheese making course. It was one day a week at Newton St Sars and she went with her quite a few other farmers wives um, to learn to make cheese. So we must have been making cheese then for certain. That's the I think they're right in saying that's the 30s or late 30s or mid 30s. Goodness me. So um, I haven't actually amazing. seen this invitation card yet, but I'm hoping to soon when we can, I can go and meet her again. But um, anyway, yes, I'm sure that cheese was made, um, had been made for years on, or perhaps always on the farm. I mean, it was one of the things people had to do because you know you can't keep all that much milk. And um, cheese is a way of um, preserving it and having something to sell at the end of the day. So, um, yes, I mean, I think it was been made for forever, probably on the farm. Yeah. 